Soft hills are the way, dinos are dead, take one. What's up, Buenos Nachos everybody. We have a long lost video here for y'all today. And by long lost, I mean I completely forgot to make it. And we just got sidetracked with riding and stacking miles. And recently got a comment on YouTube video asking where the video was for the Elite Touring Innovations Tour Pack. What we have here is going to be the Tour Pack hardware from Elite Touring Innovations. We are currently running their performance caser quick release brackets on our bike with several other upgrades like the quick turn knobs. And just to note that whenever you purchase from Elite Touring Innovations, the prices as well as the items that you're gonna be receiving is going to be for the hardware only. And you'll have to purchase those as well. But it doesn't restrict you to just only using Pelican. So if you don't have quite the budget, you could also explore other avenues. You could do the more cost effective Pelican Vault series that looks like the Pelican 1430 bags that are top open. And those are really great. They have, they have plenty of room, so be sure to check that out. Or if you're not a fan of the top case or you still want the size mount style where you open them from the top and then they open out towards the side then you could also use them with the harbor freight apache brand bags so that's what's really great about this hardware is tons of options to choose from which is going to be the second half of this video that currently for the tour pack we are running the 1525 bag from pelican and on the side cases, we are running the Pelican 1485 bags. Both of these are Air Series sets of bags, which is new technology from Pelican, making these bags the same sturdy and rigidness, but at a fraction of the cost. I wanna say I think they're 60% lighter, 30% one of those numbers. One of the cool things about the Elite Touring Innovations Tour Pack is that it comes with your quick release docking hardware, which this is the cool part, that if you run a holdback, sissy bar, holdback, passenger seat, etc., from Harley that uses their quick release hardware, that you can use it with the Elite Touring Innovations. But also on that note, if you're currently running Harley Davidson's quick release docking hardware that goes on your bike that you would put the hold fast sissy bar to, just know that the tour pack will not work in conjunction with that but it goes the opposite. You run Elite Touring Innovations docking hardware that you can use the whole fast systems with their hardware. Whenever you receive Elite Touring Innovations touring platform, you're gonna get several items that go inside your package. You're gonna get all this hardware, which is gonna be wrapped in cellophane. It's gonna be all wrapped up together. And then you're also gonna receive the quick release docking hardware, as well as a multitude of nuts, bolts, washers, and gaskets. That this is the original hardware that we got before we got the touring platform and we've already swapped it out on the motorcycle. You're gonna have a steel washer and then this rubber gasket. This is gonna go inside the bag and it's gonna secure on the bottom of this platform with a locking washer and a nut. So this is gonna go inside the bag and then it's gonna feed through the holes on the touring platform and this is gonna meet on the other end to secure it to the touring platform. You have two options that you could do. You can assemble your touring platform first you're gonna secure them onto the side with the hardware and then you can designate what the height is or you can drill the holes onto your bag first by laying this on top and then using it as a template. So once you've done all the steps necessary to get to this step, you're gonna to want to figure out the orientation of how you're gonna want your bag, if you're gonna want the openings to be towards the rear of the motorcycle or if you're gonna want the handle towards your back. So here's the handle on this end, towards the rider on the inside so whenever you get off the bike, you have this immediately accessible instead of having to walk around the bike. And then the way I did it, which was extremely easy, what you'll do is flip it over on the underside and then get your touring platform and you're gonna to try to find the middle of your bag, however you wanna mount it. You can mark it with the Sharpie, but you're gonna to wanna to get a silver or a white colored Sharpie. The way I did it, just because I only have black and I was too lazy to go to the store, I used a screwdriver and I just kind of notched a hole and scratched it in all the areas and marked them. So when I removed it, I was able to see where my markings were and then I just drilled it with a 5 16th drill bit. Just drilled it in there, it was good. One, two, four, and then you're all set. I use these small feet on the bottom of the bag as a reference point. So you have four of them throughout the bag and then you can see the holes I drilled relatively mirrored to where these squares are. 
and that was the easiest way to do it on this bag. Now it comes time to assemble our touring platform, and it all depends on your preference. You can either run it inside, on the outside. I think that on the inside looks a little cleaner, and so you're gonna have your bolt, your washer, and then you're gonna do another washer, feed it underneath, and then you're gonna do a nut, and the same thing with the other end. So we have one side on, and then you would do the same with the other side. And then one of the cool things about this tour pack, about this system, is that you can choose the height of how of how tall you want your tour pack to sit. You can either have it extremely shallow close to your seat, or you can raise it up a little bit so where there's a small gap, as well as positioning where exactly you want your tour pack to sit, whether it be farther farther back, or you can even run it a little bit closer to you, and then maybe even possibly add a cushion, a backrest, that way whenever you are on longer hauls, with it being a little bit closer to you, you can kind of lean back and it could provide a little bit of a backrest. So now that you have your touring platform assembled and you have your holes drilled on your bag already, you would set it on top of your touring platform, open up the case, and what you're gonna, and then you would line up the holes from the bottom, or you can even stick one of the bolts up through the hole to try to find it. And then to mount it, you're replacing a metal washer on top of this rubber gasket, and then you're gonna feed the bolt through it, and that's gonna go inside the bag. It's gonna help prevent any water, debris, dust, etc., from coming inside the bag, since you're gonna have it with a secure seal. And on the bottom, what you're gonna do is thread a washer through the bolt on the bottom, and then follow it with a locking washer, and then with a nut. And you're gonna do the same for all four holes, and then you would secure it to the motorcycle with the quick release docking hardware. And to remove it, yeah, baby. But now comes the exciting part. We got a new bag. This is the 1606. I'm hoping this works because as we talked about, you have the ability to run several types of bags, several setups, yada, yada, yada. Connor, you're so wise. The wisdom's already coming back. This is what I'm excited about because we have a trip coming up in January. And with me being the overpacker that I am, I want the ability to bring my sleeping bag because we just got that new sleeping bag. If you haven't seen the video, be sure and check it out. We were wilding out on that one, but I was excited for it. It's 50 bucks and it's supposed to be rated for zero degree weather. And in West Texas, it gets about 30 degrees at night, maybe colder. Ooh, this is promising already. But the hardest thing was finding the right bag that was gonna fit on this bike without looking absolutely dumb. This is a template that we cut out at the first bag we were looking at. It was a Pelican bag once again, and we wanted height so that we could pack a bunch of stuff. And in my thinking it was, that can be our one bag that we just have everything in, unload it, drop it off at camp. It's got everything set up our campsite, throw it inside the tent, and then we still have these with our snacks, random stuff that we need, and then just ability to quick access up here, and this is just the main item. Well, we're looking at the Pelican 1637 bag. In theory, on paper, it looked good. Let me make a template out of it so I can see the height, etc. That's it right there, son. Look at that. Doesn't look so bad, huh? Well, once I put it on the bike, I was like, yo, dude, this is like maybe five or six larges, like pizzas on top stacked because the dimensions are 23.4 by 17.6 with a depth of 13 inches. And it's just like, ah, dude, that's huge. So then we said, uh, no, scratch that. And then we were really trying to figure out what we were gonna get. And after countless hours on YouTube, we decided to check out the Pelican 1606. The other contender was the 1615, but I believe that one was gonna be a little bit too wide. So that was gonna have stuck out past these bags. We're trying to make it look kind of new stock. So let's go ahead and wiggle this bad boy out. Buddy, you almost dropped it. Make a mess everywhere we go. Your table is served. One of the things I was also curious about was gonna be the fact that it has this handle. This is gonna be something that we're gonna have to 
drill right on through. That the only thing that is interesting that if we were to remove the handle, now there is a gap, a void, that with enough pressure, it could probably cause a crack, et cetera. It'll mess with the integrity of the bag. So we're probably just gonna drill it right on through all of this, and we might have to get longer bolts in order for this to work. But first and foremost, I was curious to see how it would look on the bike. If it looks dumb, we're not gonna go through with it before we drill it, but we're gonna get a look inside the bag. What the? Oh, look at that, it's nice. I don't know if you're trying to yank it because on these other bags, you have to kind of force them. It's not a lot. I forgot this had like 20 sweaters in it. Because today was a cold ride, baby. And these just have a little, oh, hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? And then a couple on the sides, it's like, how you doing? And then that's it. And you open this bad boy up. Woo, dog. It's got your literature, don't put a baby inside it. Pretty deep, you know what? We're gonna see. Here's our camera case that we put inside the 1525, and this, on the 1525, it sticks up just to about the lip, but it still closes without any issues. And this, it's well beneath it, probably about an inch and a half. I could probably, whoo, so much more room. It would be neat to have a little bit more height with this exact dimension. Again, we have yet to put it on the bike because I think this offers a little bit more room that I can put my sleeping bag in because I know the sleeping bag is probably gonna take up a lot of space, but my tent for sure, my stove, etc. because worst case scenario, because what we plan on doing is adding a luggage rack on top that we can put our sleeping bag on top, just put it on there because that thing is huge. It's $50, but the compactability, is that a word? Compactability is just nowhere to be found. That thing is just massive. It, you can't compact it, but again, for $50, I don't think the technology would be there to make it so small. So in comparison, here is the 1525, and it is, now it's just slightly taller than the 1525, closed it's maybe a bag and a half bag and a quarter but it does offer a little bit more room there's a comparison here's the bag it's hard to see because it's black on black but it almost fits in the other bag hello friend let's go camping <laughs> oh even if this bag doesn't work, I want to keep it on just that alone. So it's just like, boom. Oh, buddy! Look at that! <laughs> Yo! I think that's gonna work, dude. Because I thought it was gonna be way wider, way taller, but that, it's perfect, dude. Because I could center that. I mean, yes, it's big. So she said, yes, it's bigger than the 1525, but it's not obnoxiously large where it's like, oh, we get it, bro. You can haul a bunch of stuff on your bike. And also, if I decide to push the touring platform just a little bit forward, it would be close to my back that I could add a backrest on the other side and then I could kick it. Yo, I'm so pumped about this. So now what we're gonna do is just do all the exact same steps that you would do we just talked about to drill the holes for this 1606 bag and get it installed. First step, get your super dope Pelican 1606. We're gonna be running it with the handles and everything to the back, so we're just gonna flip it over. And you're just gonna wanna keep that in mind whenever you do. So the handle is on this end, and I'm gonna keep that in mind whenever I add my touring platform. The rear's that way, this is where it docks in towards the front, so we're making note of that. And so what we're doing here is that it wasn't entirely centered, so I'm just wanting to remove some of this, I don't even know what you would call it, a ribbing? It's, I think it's for aesthetics or maybe to help it slide because where it was at, 
let's say it was here for instance, that there's still a lot of weight on one side of the bag and it wouldn't be directly centered. It looked centered initially, but then I said, you know what, let me measure the distance from the end of the bag to the touring platform and then do the same on the other side. And this was about six inches and the other side was about seven. So we ended up removing some of the ribs already and it was close where it was about six and a half now and then it was about seven on one side. So we're just adding a little bit more removed. We're just removing a little bit more material from here, so that way you can sit relatively flush. Again, this is just because on the 1606 versus the other bags, it has this handle, and while the other ones don't, so it's part of the design for this bag with the handle. And that's the only reason why we're having to remove it. Well, we're not having to, we're choosing to. Just, uh... To make things a little bit more clean and uniform. And I'm just using a box cutter. And the other tool I was using was for window tent. It was a window scraper. And we marred up the bag a little bit, but again, it's the bottom. I don't think anyone's gonna notice it. Hey man, let me check out the bottom of your bag. So now, we're just gonna remock it up. So on this end, at where it sits now, it's just at six and a half, maybe a little bit less. And then here, it's a little bit more than six and a half, so we can push this over a little bit. I'm happy with that. So we have our marks. Oh Jesus, that moved out of the way. Well, no turning back now. That's two. We can actually see. Oh, we didn't even touch the handle. I thought we were gonna be hitting the handle. Look at that. We still got a functioning handle, dog. No, look at that, big boy, big boy. All right, now let's see what the damage is on the inside. Oh, nice. That, it ends up being, it's gonna be hard to see, but you can kinda see it. Right here on these ledges, is where it is. Ooh, dog, that was muddy. So one quick test to see is how far this bolt is gonna go through, which I'm gonna guess is not going very far. <sighs> yep, not even on the other side, look at that. It looks like we're off to the store. And just like that, we have new bolts. gonna do is grab your washer and your rubber gasket thread that through and you're gonna do that for all four bolts all right so now that portion is ready to rock we are going to insert we're gonna replace the bag on top now that we have our new fancy two inch bolts find the appropriate Set up. So we already got one, and what we're doing is we're doing a washer first, and then the locking washer, and then we're doing it with the nut. So we're just feeding it through, and then following it with the nut on the bolt, and then kind of just threading it, getting it. We're just doing finger tighten for now. We have it all set up. Here it is with the Elite Turing platform. <laughs> now we're just gonna fit it. That's lined up. That should be close to being lined up. Ow. That is 
on. That is on. Yo, look at that. Dog, what? Oh, how does that look? Look at that. It's too far back, but it's not. It's not entirely too. If I had a back pad, I could probably reach it. Or if I could always, and like I said, we could always move it forward. Hey man, what's up? You get any table? Dog. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. Look at that, hot dog. Forty percent lighter. I think we said thirty and sixty. We were wrong on both accounts. All right. Ooh, such a great feeling. That's the tour pack. It looks good, but will I ever run it full time? Probably not, because it's like I'm moving out all the time. <laughs> but for camping, I think it's solid.